Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a replay. A couple of replays tonight, actually, both of them with Sarkos involved. The first one will be a game against Google Frog on the classic All of Stone Pass. And we're starting out. So, Google Frog versus Sarkos. I haven't seen this match before because I generally don't watch matches before I cast them, except, of course, the one I'm playing in, which obviously I had to know, but at least I have it on my end. So, Gonna bring this back up. And so we'll be starting out with let's see, Google Frog is in red. Sarkos is in blue, he's the player we're looking at right now. And Google Frog on the other hand is red, and he is at the bottom of the map. He has not chosen his race yet. But it's actually kind of unusual. Jumping back. Very nice choosing his race. So he will be choosing his race as Grekim. So it's CISO versus Grekim. Sarko is playing CISO and Google Frog playing Grekim. Google Frog is going, getting his, getting normal start, getting far up, probably going to move the Arcticus up as soon as he can. Bits of, he'll be moving as soon as he can. Sarkarp is an importer. This is a bit more of a midi, middling economy build. Mostly it's allowing for safe military on top of your units early on. So this is important because otherwise you'd end up allowing yourself to be too open. And all of Stone Pass is a tiny map. It's 192 by 192, and that is small. When it was first made, it was considered quite large because the only other map was absolutely minuscule, but it's a, t it's a small map. It really is. So anyway, coming back, making sure he's getting the perfect start, getting his Octos in efficient places, so this one last Octo will be able to get into RP mode. And this is the classic 7 RPs on LC build that... Oh no, his Octo is actually not going to be going for RPs this time, and... This is anyway it's saying start of a classic start on LP for Grek and they generally do this. It's easier to get a ton of Octos and then build up from there. Though I'm not sure if the metagame has shifted. There's been a lot of changes to Grekim recently, which could change it. And with Sarkos, from his point of view, he it does have a special ops coming in. It's hard to tell if he's echoing it a lot of times that is a permanent scout. Sarkos actually has been building quite a bit. He's building quite a lot for himself of expansions. He's getting his natural a little bit, and getting some factories down there as well. Factory and armory. Has a couple factories, no, three factories in his main base, and an armor with Lancers coming in, so he's definitely going great. The early importer is cornerstone to a rush build. So now time with this pass, he's jumping back, making sure it's going on, because he did come in when it was just a race picker, and he wants to make sure he's not going to lose his units. He loses some stuff up here, so you can double check that, and go into every replay mode. Dangerous, dangerous every replay mode. So yeah, he's just back up here, he does see what he's, what's going on, it's about 334 mark, but when he was actually focused near the present, he... Saw so the Arcticus is there. The Arcticus, like I said, is being set up to tank. Google Frog is paying very close attention to this, but he isn't really too worried from the looks of it. He's still building up, getting his tech RP set up. He's not building a whole lot. He has some options that are being built and being sent out, rallied out, but they aren't going to be needed, really. The Spec Ops is not going to last very long. Sarkos, however, jumping back about 10 seconds. He sees that the Spec Ops will be destroyed further on, but this one time we've gets rid of that. He's not letting the Spec Ops stay there. An Octo coming in with, is going to destroy it. Sarkos does not seem keen on moving it around, however. And this is the factory we saw later on, or earlier, but later on in the timeline. Building up Lancers, apparently building up ATHCs first, and then building up Lancers. Which could be effective, it looks like Google Frog right now doesn't have any Faros. Of course, it's hard for Sarkos to tell that, but Google Frog does not have any Faros except for the one progenerating. So it's going to have a hard time detecting what's going on, but that progenerating Faro is close enough to the resources that it should be able to spot the ATHCs. While Sarkos here are saying these ATHCs, moment of truth, he doesn't have much to build in these factories we saw before later on the timeline. So this is about the 308 mark. We were looking at the 334 mark, that later on the timeline bit. So now the ATHC is not in fact cloaked. He hasn't cloaked it yet, which is very strange. Not sure what exactly he's going for, but he hasn't cloaked it. And Afaro does exist in the main base, besides the one that was already there. Going for it first, but it's not going to be able to kill fast enough. The ATHC is cloaked, but to no avail that Faro is going to be able to destroy the ATHC in no time. So the ATHC is going to be completely useless, and Sarkos is jumping back about 15 seconds and going to completely abort the attack. Just going to get out of the main base, go to the Arcticus, Oh yeah, right. Arcticuses can cloak. I think no, they can't cloak. They can't detect cloak. So how in the world? Anyway, Sarkos has jumped back another minute or so to try to fix up a strategy, get his HAC in better position, and get his fact. Well, his factories are unchanged. His expansion is also unchanged. Looking back, don't think what's going on. He's setting up some new HAC orders, trying to veer around. But Google Frog has already anticipated this and is going to be getting. Actually, not hasn't even anticipated that that Octo was going out in the first place. Google Frog's point of view, he sees the ATC is here, but he doesn't really, he doesn't really care. Oh, and a, no, Spire is being set up from the Faro. Once that Faro is 
Now, the frog's gonna die to the HTC. The Google Frog needs to get that out of the way. And jumping back about 15 seconds from Sarkoz's point of view, two HTCs have jumped into Google Frog's base. So now Sarkoz is a bit of a better position. But it looks like these Cephis will be completely destroyed. The Octopus is completely destroyed. Google Frog is gonna have to deal with this as soon as he can. These Cephis and Octos are gonna take a lot of damage. And the Faro even is not helping out for some reason. It's just hanging out there, healing up. And it looks like. There is going to be no real detection. These ATHCs are having free reign over the base. Jumping back about 20 seconds, Google Frog is actually jumping around, and he is able to target it with the Faro's. The Faro just got a little bit confused, and it will be able to detect, but it won't be able to last long enough from the looks of it. Google Frog jumping back again, trying to get this Faro into a better position to attack, and it will be able to do it. So he, with that Faro, the last change to the Faro did manage to save it and get it in a good position to detect the ATHC. Sarkos will not be able to deal with this. He has a rubber jump back. Issuing a couple of orders to change around, targeting the Faro, but the Faro will not be going down quickly enough. Two Reefs are very powerful. Not quite a bubble wrap build, that's three Reefs, but two Reefs is still a lot of healing, and that Faro is pretty much indestructible for now. And another Marine coming in as well, just to do some harassment. I'm not sure how effective that will be, because Google Frog does have quite a bit of defenses, but he may not be even concerned about this. I think, however, that it's not going to make a difference. This Marine is just going to get itself killed. Sarko is willing to jump back and fix that up. He is, however, getting a factory, which is a much better use of Marine. Building a factory inside of Google Frog's expansion, or was going to, and decided against it. Building RPs, however, definitely committing to that. Well, as much as you can commit to anything in Akron at this point in the timeline. This is quite far from the playable past. But Google Frog, however, has actually changed up his tactics a little bit more. Moving back as far away, forward again to detect. One step he did go down, but more Faros are set up. These HTCs are going to have to escape. And another reef is being built up, actually. So more healing, much better setup. So this is not quite bubble wrap, but still three reefs. Very powerful. Bubble wrap is when you have three reefs such that they all are at each other's borders. And oh wow, an Octo also coming in as well into Sarkos' expansion at the 514 mark, but Sarkos is trying to deal with this as best he can, jumping near the unplayable past to try to deal with his attack, sending out an ATC, but unfortunately has very little chrono energy left. And neither does Google Frog actually. Neither of them have a lot of chrono energy, but Google Frog had the initiative on this one. Sarkos was able to defend. He does have... No, his Octo is still coming in the base, so Sarkos is still going to have to defend that Octo. However, it is very weakened, and once that Marine is done building RPs, it'll be able to kill it in one hit. And two hits. Sorry. <laughs> Slightly wrong there. Two hits, not one hit. So, assuming Google Frog is going to be building up some more of an army going up here, and trying to go for a much more meaningful attack on Sarkos' base. Sarkos is right next to the Unplayable Pass. From his point of view, it is the Unplayable, or just about. He has enough C for one order. Looks like that order is going to be harassing that natural expansion. The ATHCs are going to go down to harass that reef in the natural expansion. While the reef has actually not been built this time around. Google Frog aborted that entirely. Focusing more on defense. Well, the Lancer is coming in the main base. One of them being destroyed and the other one not doing any real harassment. Damaging one of the Faros a little bit. But really needed to damage these RPs. Did take out a bit of them. But one or two of them... Yeah, one or two of them got closed up. But that was hardly useful at all. So Google Frog has really nothing to worry about. Two minutes to try to figure out what's going on. 5.30 mark. Trying to get a grip on his harassment, but he's not going to be able to do that effectively. Google Frog just has too much initiative on him, and too large of an army. Getting his army in, like I said, hardly any harassment, no meaningful harassment going on here on Google Frog. He has more than enough resources and reserves for that to not be a huge difference. His initiative is... Well, it's his initiative, really. So Sarko's trying to go back to deal with this right when Google Frog is. Probably won't be able to do too much at this point, unless he starts defending. Google Frog has a very large army. Sarkos really needs to worry about getting his army up, getting himself teched up. He doesn't have any real army being produced. Some Lancers coming up, but nothing other than that. And quite a few reserves, but really no chrono energy. He has enough resources, but he doesn't have enough... basically enough chrono energy to order them around. He should be jumping to the future, jumping across the timeline, using that to get himself out of this, but unfortunately he hasn't gone and done that, and it looks like he may be planning on doing that right up in the future, but he didn't actually do that. He, there's no green in the timeline. We know if they're going on. He is going to the past to try to do this, however, but this is not the best way to go about it. This is going to be very chronology expensive, and that is not something he needs. What he needs right now is to use as little, little chrono energy as he can, trying to get some factories inside of Google Frog's natural expansion, but not doing any good. Google Frog not even worried about that, just jumping towards the future, has little legal class units, air units coming in. He's going to be able to build some air legal class units, but I don't know if he really cares. He has to try to do it, though. Actually, two Sepipods, Farpod, two Octopods, one of the Octopods is being set up as the leader, and it will be directing all of his forces inside Sarkos' bases. It's about a minute, or half a minute up from Sarkos, but Sarkos is more worried about the fact that he's just lost his entire proxy natural expansion in Google Frog's natural. 
He is not so worried about the attack that's coming in. It's going to be rather delayed from his point of view. And Google Frog jumping back to... Well, set up his forces a bit better, but really not doing too much. He has... His forces are being set out. He is getting RPs in place. That RPs moving towards the natural as well. So just setting that up. But nothing really different from last time. Getting specials as well. This is something we don't see a lot of players do is get specials. Very useful. Mostly once you get legal class units, the legal class are the ones with the specials for the most part. But still kind of surprising. I haven't really seen that come up a whole lot. And as you can see here, if you look at the command queue, all the pod class units have their specials. But the legal class units do get specials. Ultra Lego has Nana, in fact. Seppi Lego has nothing. Faro Lego has the freeze bomb, which is devastating when timed right. And now Google Frog jumping back about a minute or so just to figure out what's going on at Sarkos's point of view. Sarkos's point of view, just for our consideration, Sarkos is actually paused. He has Gate Tech, he has a Chronoporter, and he's trying to get a Chronoport going, but unfortunately for him, he did it a bit too soon, and his Chronoporter has not finished recharging. So I don't think that chron that Chronoport, no, I can see on the timeline right now, that Chronoport did not go off. So unfortunately for Sarkos, nothing really effective happened. He's gonna need to try to do this Chronoport again. Google Frog, not really worrying too much about it, just getting his own attack in the main, not attacking to the main base directly using this ramp, because that's where the Chronoporter is, and that will be very useful. Cr Sarkos has sent back Chronoport units, a ton of Lancers being cr and HHT's Chronoporter back. Still not high enough tech to deal with this, but it should be able to disrupt Google Frog's plans somewhat. So once this green, sorry, once this green time wave comes along, that will be moment of truth to figure out what's going on. It looks like Sarko's, he's getting some damage in, but from the timeline perspective, it's going to go to the observer view. The timeline perspective, we see that a lot of damage is going on in the timeline, but it's not enough. Really, these forces are just getting torn to shreds. I mean, obviously, there isn't much you can command back in the past, so I'm not surprised, but still, these are forces are just getting torn apart. And it looks like Google Frog jumping back, seeing that this is going on as well, trying to figure out what's happening, but probably realizing quite quickly that nothing of any note is happening. These units are doing nothing. A good attempt by Sarkos, but unfortunately not useful at all. So Google Frog, more concerned with his attack, closer to the unplayable pass of the 935 mark. Not so concerned with his attack, or the attack on his base, rather, earlier in the timeline at about the 6 o'clock mark. Uh, let's see here, it's about the 6.30 mark. Yes, yeah, so Sarkos, realizing not much has gone well with this, moving another ATHC in there, front back another ATHC to help out and support, but that really won't do too much. The Octo back there was still able to take care of it, so not so much going on. Gooflock had a very nice set of units set up as is natural. Sarko's really picked the wrong choice. And now jumping forward about three minutes, we have the 1033 mark. A ton of units coming in, and it looks like more reefs coming in. Gooflock is really enjoying building these reefs. I like that. I like that he's building a lot of mid-ground reefs. They're cheap buildings. They are extremely useful for healing. So awesome support buildings. They really should be built more often than they are, and I'm glad Gooflock is building them as he is now. Very neat to see. That being said, Google Frog's attack is a curse. Sarko's base. And a Chronoport department has occurred again. So Sarko's is sending more units into the past, not even following them this time. So this Chronoport, once the red time wave, no, blue time wave, sorry, comes along, we'll figure out where that Chronoport actually landed. Sarko's, however, is more concerned with defending this attack than he is with actually doing any real fancy Chronoport maneuvers. And of course, he has no macrofabs either, which means he's not going to be able to actually send any really powerful high tech units. A good strategy right now, well, other than just pure defense, would be going to the future, trying to get a macro fab up, and just quickly fast forwarding to fix this whole situation up. Because right now he has hardly anything. He needs to get some, either a huge amount of low tech units. Actually, he has more of the resources for a lot of low tech units. A bunch of armies in the future or something. Though so sending that back is a lot more cost prohibitive. Or try to get more macro fab units. And it looks like we have in the past on the blue time wave, we see that there is an attack coming in that we have Sarko's actually, oh, trying to perma-clone. So he's actually trying to destroy the Chronoporter, and I don't see this really going too well. This mech is dealing hardly any damage, and that Chronoport is going to happen about now, actually. Yeah, the Chronoport still happens, so yeah, that attempted at perma-clone was kind of neat, but not ultimately useful. So Sarko's back at 11.43 mark. This is about three, about three minutes up from when we were looking at the Chronoport. He's taking a lot more damage this time. Google Frog has not gotten chronoporting of his own, but still dealing a lot of damage in the unplayable past. And just can double check what's going on there. And actually, Google Frog is dealing a decent amount of damage in the unplayable past. I think most of that is Sarko's damaging himself, trying to destroy that that chronoporter, trying to perma clone. And yeah, he wasn't successful. It, I'm not surprised, honestly. That was kind of a silly attempt. I mean, he might be able to perma clone this mech, but I highly doubt it. No, this mech is actually going to go into paradox state. But that's not even worth worrying about as a paradox. So we're at the 953 mark right now, where the attack, Google Frost attack, is just coming in, but it's not going to be doing too much. 
The attack is being prepared at the 850 mark once again. Mech's trying to go back to do even more damage to try to deal with his chance, but he's not going to be able to do it, and this will not work. So that was an interesting attempt to permaclone, but really not the best way of doing it. And Google Frog also looking at the global path, seeing his attack going very well, although he is starting to lose quite a few units. He really needs to start producing more units. Oh, he already had produced units. Good. So he has been producing units, and make sure his production has been going, getting legal class units as well, and of course he has specials so he can do the freeze bombs if he wants to. Sarko's back up here, will have enough resources to do some real production. About 1319 mark, we see that he is starting to build macrofabs. I think it's too little too late, honestly, and rebuilding his chrono porter, or no, not even rebuilding it, he doesn't even have the chrono porter anyway, but he will get it once the red time wave comes along. Still, that was honestly kind of stupid. I'm, I'm not sure why he went for that, that late in. No saying the red time wave actually does bring more damage. It looks like there is not a lot Google Frog is going to be doing after that point. The Chrono Porter still exists, so once the Red Time Wave comes along, the Green Time Wave has no Chrono Porter, but the Red Time Wave will, and Google Frog has not set up any attack in the Unplayable Past at this point. So we are going to see a whole lot of damage coming in from Google Frog, but we are going to see a lot of Google Frog building up a base inside the Natural and setting a far legal to Freeze Bomb. There we go. The Freeze Bomb going off at the 1354 mark on all the mac or two of the, two of the factories, one of the macrofabs, and all of the units that were there. All Chrono Free. The Far Lego is dead, but that was a worthy sacrifice from that Far Lego. Interesting that Google Frog has actually not gotten Gate Tech yet. He doesn't have a lot of QP, but still, I'm quite, I'm kind of surprised because he was always super huge on Chrono or a Chrono attacks, though mostly in terms of delayed attacks. However, still Freeze Bomb. That's gonna win him the game, right there. That on the main base like that, I don't see how he's gonna be able to. Sarkos is apparently trying to Chrono Port some units again. But I don't see that doing much good, really. There's not a whole lot going on right now that he can do anything about. That red timer, like I said, will be able to bring that Chrono Porter back up. Sarkos' only hope at this point is to start Chrono Porting back units with that. And I don't think it's going to work. So Sarkos has GG'd. That is the game. And yeah, Freeze, awesome ability. Game winning right there. I hope you enjoyed that because I certainly did. So that was game one. Now moving on to game two. Game 2 is a game between Sarkos and myself, and it was a rather recent game on a map that's actually not played a lot because it's not included in the main game for copyright reasons. I'll, I'll be fixing this up within the next month or so. But anyway, it is... Oh no, sorry, not the one I'm going to be fixing up in the next month or so. This is one I'm going to be fixing up sometime not in the foreseeable future because these textures are harder to do. Anyway, Felsic Inferno, an old classic map was very, very popular about the time of the first beta tournament, and not the Temporal Anomaly tournament, but the tournament that came before. And unfortunately this version is a little red. I've updated it since. You noticed in the replay list there was a bunch of 117s. Yeah, that was updated since. So once that happens it'll be fine. But yeah, right now I've, I'm afraid it's going to be a bit hard to see, but the next version's a lot easier to see on. So it's not a big deal. I might even show that after this cast. Regardless, the important thing is that my units are being sent out. I have a Shinbeer going to the north over to Sarkos's base. Sarkos is playing on the east side of the map. I'm on the west side of the map. Sarkos is playing CISO. I am playing Vekir. So we have the game going. I am building up just a basic economy structure. Five, five RPs on LC, one on QP, but actually undoing the QPRP. I'm going to be setting up a depot instead. Getting an early depot because I want to get the faster vehicles for better harassment. Sarkos, on the other hand, is going for five, well, four and one. Four RPs on LC and one importer getting another importer after, or another RP afterwards getting a quick factory. Very similar to what he was doing in his game versus Google Frog, actually. So he seems to be very much liking this strategy. And I'm not surprised. It's a really easy way to get quick units out, get a quick rush out, but it's a bit risky when it comes to trying to actually get something powerful in there because you end up if you're not careful you don't forget to if you forget to expand you're not going to tech up fast enough you don't tech up fast enough you're not going to be able to actually get anything meaningful in your opponent's base now am i i'm actually about a minute up from there about 40 seconds up from there have my depot completed and i'm sending a zine veer jumping back to double check because i did this a bit wrong the first couple times and it will be setting up a zine veer turning into a zine torture just double checking to make sure I have all the timings right. I built the Zion Beer too late at first, and trying to get it a bit earlier to make it work, so it's not a big deal. Sarkos, on the other hand, is getting harassed by my Shin my Teth Beer, and my Shin Beer is over in the north, not doing anything yet. I don't have money to build a foundation, but I just want it there just to make it a bit faster when I do. 
So, my Shin Beer is going to be dealing a fair amount of damage, or sorry, Teth Beer is dealing a fair amount of damage, but it is going to be destroyed fairly quickly. That's fine, all I want to know is race and building setup. Mostly building setup, because you can kind of hear the race, but you can't hear building setup as easily. The Lancer is coming in from Sarkos, trying to attack me directly. However, I'm going to be in a slightly better position by the time I actually see it. This is He's about 30 seconds ahead of me. From my point of view, I have a Zion Tritcher coming, getting upgraded teleport, and cloaking on, just cloaking it to make sure it's a bit less obvious to actually have one in case he scouts me. And getting a Shinbeer as well. I need to get a Tethbeer and or Teth Pulsar or something. I have the Shinbeer here, however, and getting it starting to attack me and getting a foundation to help with healing the Shinbeer. The Shinbeer will be able to last a bit longer and it should be able to get rid of the Lancer. But I have a feeling that Sarkos is gonna be actually I know for sure that Sarkos is gonna be attacking that Lancer quite a bit more often. At the same time, of course, my Zion Torture is inside his base, and it gets itself killed, which is not exactly what I want to do. So instead, after realizing the Lancer is going to work, teleport around the Zion Torture. It's a very typical teleport spam. Just getting it around, trying to take care of all the RPs, and trying to make sure they're all as close as possible. Sarkos, however, does have a lot of RPs in his natural, which I haven't caught yet. And from Sarkos, there's me coming in. He doesn't know where I am quite yet. But he does know that there is Zion Turtle here and that he doesn't want to deal with it. His Lancer has moved around to harass further in my LC line. I'm trying to deal with that, but my Shin Beer has come up to help against that as well. Also in range of Foundation, so that won't be able to deal any damage. While Sarkos is building up his Foundations in his natural, his Foundations in his main are being heavily damaged by these which is Special off will be able to see, but of course Zion wants to actually get my handle on it. Back in my point in time, I have teleported away. I am just keeping it as far away from any detectors as possible. Except right now, I'm trying to bait the special off as best I can, but realizing it's not going to work. Getting rid of the Lancer, which is probably going to be that useful. Sarkos will probably just pull it out of the way when he gets a chance, but still, getting rid of it, not really paying too much attention to this. I'm really more focused on getting this harassment out of the way and building some more units. Getting the ACC going so I can get the Shin Beer doing something useful. And getting my North Base build up as well so I can actually get more expansions and a better defended expansion. But mostly focusing on this Zion Turcher, teleporting it around, making sure it's doing the best job it can. Sarkos, on the other hand, about 10 seconds behind, doesn't know where it is, and focused more on his own harassment. So both of us are focused on a harassment, and not at all really focused on... Although I am focused somewhat on defense. He doesn't obviously know where my Zion Turcher will be at any moment, because it can teleport around just, like, mad. One of the reasons I love that unit. Really fun to teleport around, and it's... I don't know, I just like teleport. I just in any game. I just love teleporting around for the sake of just messing with people. Not, I mean, and also just tactical, oh, well, tactical positioning more so, but yeah. Anyway, jumping back to figure out what's going on. Sarkos is jumping back, I should say. And it looks like he's not really doing too much in the way of orders, just double checking and playable pass to see what's going on. He, has, he is sending an order, he's getting a Lance, no, the Lancer is not being sent too much earlier. He is building up another Lancer fairly early, which I think is the Lancer he built before. And it looks like no, this is still the RPs are still going as he was before. He is building more RP off a stronger economy by the time it comes in. This Zion Churcher actually harassment is not going to be as effective as I would have liked. Now, from my point of view, I'm about two minutes up, or about sorry, half a minute up from there. I was two minutes up until I just jumped. And aerial control center is done. I need to build some air units, any auto defense as well in case more lancers come in. I'm not going to have much of a chance to deal with them directly. I'm annex in the north base now, so I can start building Zion Beers and build up RPs up there as well. So getting all that set up, my Zion Tritcher is continuing to attack the RPs, dealing as much damage as it can, but not dealing that much damage. The green time wave will reduce a lot of the damage. This Special Ops here and Lancer is right in position to deal with it. The Special Ops actually doesn't... As far as I can't see it, is it? No, it's in range, definitely, but... Teleporting around, trying to get around this, trying to avoid being detected as much as possible, doing a, good, a very good job of it. Almost no damage so far, but this is probably going to be the moment of truth. I, and no, the Special Ops is about to die, and the Special Ops has died, so... This turn, however, from the harassment, Sarkos is the one focusing on this right now, and I'm actually jumping around a bit more, trying to just get an even better position, although I think that actually this may have been a mistake, because I did kill that Special Ops and Mech, and now I'm not teleporting around to do so. I do have a Shimpulsor set up just for some quick patrols, some cheap patrols. I don't have a lot of QP. I should be getting more RP, QP RPs, but I haven't actually done that yet. Getting some Zion Beers to help build an expansion, and Sarkos has also got his North expansion starting up, getting his expansion up there. Not super focused on it right now, more focused on the defense of his base, and just generally focused on getting everything set up, but he's not really too focused on getting that area. getting more RPs up there, while at the same time I'm not really getting a lot of RPs. I'm not focused at this point in time, but I'm focused slightly ahead of it, so you would be seeing what's going on from Sarkos' point of view. And yes, the Zion Torture has actually been knocked down, and I will be having to get around this, but 
Now I'm just going back right now. Going back, trying to figure out how to get around this. More detectors being built up, and no turrets yet, but still a lot of special ops. And these special ops are coming in. We're still harassing the LC, as you can see, his LC is not super high, but he has been building a lot of units. And at the same time, I've not been building a huge amount. Major QP block, and I'm not really paying attention to it a lot. I still haven't. I'm still trying to get used to using this effectively. And now I'm noticing, as I'm leaving the base, that there actually is another expansion. I'm trying to deal with that as well, but that was a little bit late, I'm afraid. I really should have checked that sooner. Sarko, on the other hand, further in the future, is building up his north expansion quite a bit. He has two factories, getting quite a lot of map control, and at the same time, I'm got, I've got nothing. I have a north base, I have my main, hardly anything in either. I really need more QP. I'm starting to build my expansion. Oh, this is further in the past. From when I'm actually, what I'm, I'm actually doing, or focused on doing, I am building this expansion in my, well, main sort of natural expansion. Kind of a risky expansion, but it's still there. Getting more QP, actually get, trying to get rid of my QP de deficit. And getting an RP in this center as well, though I don't know how much good it'll do. Or actually, I do know how much good it'll do, which isn't much at all, I'm afraid. As a Bastion, will be able to just a bit more map control, but I'm not taking advantage as much as I should be. Note, I have not played in a while. I really don't play enough. I, I know, that sounds really bad. I'm commenting this game. I really should be playing a lot more often, but I haven't been playing as much as I should be, so this game is not going to be as good as it could have been. Just trying to get up what I can in terms of my units, however, and my tech as well, but I really don't have a whole lot of tech at the moment. I just have auto defense. While Sargos has gate tech and machinery back here, I do not have either right now. Well, of course, I can't get machinery. I don't play CISO. But I do have... I don't have ground units... Or, sorry, Halkin class, which is about the equivalent to machinery in terms of the tech. So, able to do what I can with his... Trying to use his Zion Pulsers to harass the north base, realizing it exists. Not doing a huge amount of damage, however, given that the north base wasn't well developed. I mean, it wasn't super important, and now it's focusing too much on the factories. So, these turn on. Once it comes in here, Sarkos is going to be able to just deal with everything I have. Once he does, that attack will be completely nullified. More foundations coming up in the north base, but not really do too much. This is actually a bit of a mistake. I will be undoing this foundation up here pretty shortly. But what I need to get right now is gate tech, which I am getting. So I am getting gate tech, and that will be useful once I actually get it up and get a slip gate up and running. But what I need to also do is get more units up and running to try to help out. So for me, I am getting slip. I am getting gate tech. I will be getting a slip gate soon. I will also be getting a lot more skip teleport. And my Zion Turcher is here. Not actually, that's a second Zion Turcher, I believe. But at least one Zion Turcher coming in there, and another Zion Turcher will be coming in later. And here we have the Zion Pulse are still dealing damage. This is back when they were dealing damage before the 832 mark. Sarko is about 30 seconds up from here, noticing this happens, building another factory, and more factories coming in as well. So he's just building tons and tons of factories, which is what he normally does. Getting also a ton of Tornans, sending them towards my base, and I'm a little bit behind there. Getting my Shin Pulse up, getting not really any units, just trying to figure out my resource setup. So that gate tech will actually work, and then from there being able to get slip gates working. Because I wanted to make sure, I think I undermined gate tech accidentally, and now I've got to get around it. I tried to teleport these Zion Pulsers around, but not quite sure what I was going to do with that. These Zion Pulsers weren't able to really teleport around as effectively as they could have. So it took me a lot of, un I'm trying to take a lot of undo to try to get around that. Sarkos, on the other hand, is going to be just building up. Building up a huge army, which is what I should have been doing this entire time. He has eight factories so far on both of his bases. He has his Tornads set up. This is why I was teleporting away the Zion Pulsers. The Tornads were dealing a lot of damage to them. One of the Zion Pulsers is dead. This is, it's in Veer mode now. The other, well, the Veer is ejected, rather. And the other Zion Pulser is going to be going down shortly. Gatech is almost done, however, and from my point of view, it is oh, just about done. I do need to get more LC for the Slipgate, and once I do, I will be able to start teleporting, or chronoporting in his back. Teleporting as well, but mostly chronoporting. Because all I can really do right now is start chronoporting in his back to actually deal with everything now. And trying to get more of my depot before the slipgate. But I'm going to have to go back and try to fix that up. Sarkos, from his point of view, doesn't have a chronoporter yet. He has had gate tech for... No, he hasn't. He actually undermined his own gate tech. He did have gate tech coming, but he doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, it looks like even further in the past, he's jumped back to the 909 mark about a minute down from where we were. He does not have gate tech. This is when his factories were being built up and my Zion Pulsar was dying. He does not have gate tech building up yet, so he's not actually going for that quite yet. He did have it before. We did see it on the little upgrade view here. However, I do have gate tech. I am getting a slip gate up. We are at the same time. We're both focused at the same point in time. About 1044, about a minute and a half behind the present. And we are both actually have started to escape away with these RPs. He actually does attack me. He will be attacking me with his tornadoes, and once he does that, I will have to start escaping these RPs away to the center base. 
and more RPs coming out. I'm trying to attack his RPs, get him with my Zion Pulsar, and that's not doing any good. My Zion Pulsar is... My Zion Pulsar attack was completely useless. And from my point of view, about a minute up from here, my Slipgate is almost done. I'm going to start turn pointing back units to deal with some of the attacks going on. No attacks really yet, but I'm still going to worry about some stuff because there is a lot going on, and I've got to make sure I have what I need to get around this, and just... Actually, let's just teleporting in the center to get around... The attack... I'm just going to double check with the Observer. I think the attack did happen. No, that was just me. So I, I haven't actually been attacked by Tornads yet. I will be attacked soon. But I haven't been attacked by Tornads yet. So... I am, however, sending back a Teth Churcher to try to deal with what's going on here. And that will be a bit more effective. It hasn't been sent back yet, but... Well, right now it's just there for defense, but I will be needing to send it back if these Tornads come in. And these Tornads are looking very threatening. They will be coming in, I'm sure, very shortly. More Tornads in the North Base as well, so Sarko is really loving his Tornads. Not building a lot of units right now, however, and he has enough CE to do so, and enough resources as well. It looks like he's trying to save up for Gate Tech of his own, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does that, because he has plenty of resources. He has a lot of CE as well, but resources is more important. And here I go. Now I'm actually jumping back in the playable pass to figure out what is actually going on there. Did something mess up? I swear these Tornads attacked me. This is... This is bizarre. These Tornads, I'm sure, attacked me by now. Anyway, the... It's rather strange. Apparently, these Tornads have not actually attacked me. Sarkoz was telling me that he did find that this was supposed to happen and didn't. So, it looks like his Tornads did get messed up by something I did, but I haven't actually done any Chrono Porting yet. Which is strange. I was pretty sure I had done Chrono Porting by now. I definitely... Yes, going into the future, I... Built more, building more Zion Pulsars to try to send them back to deal with what was going on, but this is really strange. Why is this not... <sighs> okay, this is getting annoying. Why, when I had RPs set up, and everything set up, is it not... There's no attack coming. Seriously, there should be an attack here. There should be a Tornado attack in my main base. This is why these RPs moved. It's because of the Tornado attack. And now, Sarko's seems to have completely vanished. So, that that's underwhelming. Okay, there we go. There's my chronoports. I'm definitely chronoporting back my units to try to save them. But Sarkos' attacks never came. Okay, well, that's annoying and disappointing. I thought that the replay corruption thing was an internet thing. Apparently, it's not an internet thing. At least, not exclusively an internet thing. In case you're wondering, yeah, I know, I do have the editing, but the Observer Wave is on the present, so it's not going to be affecting anything. Not that it would normally, but in case anyone jumps to it. And so, yeah, apparently something just completely messed up with the replay. Okay, that's really annoying. I'm... I don't know what to do about this. I think I'll just be cutting this off, honestly. In case you're wondering, Sarko's wins. He ends up overwhelming me with just a huge army as I try to chronoport back repeatedly to deal with what he has, but he's not actually doing anything yet. He's looking back right now because my chronoport attacks had happened and were doing a lot of damage, but apparently his tornadoes got messed up somehow, so I don't know what happened, but something happened. Something dreadful happened. Oh, it looks like stuff actually is happening in the Playable Past, or near the Playable Past, but I think that's... No, that actually is... Here we are, that's a Zion Pulsar is actually sent in for, or Zion Churcher, one of the Zion class units, Zion Churcher probably, Zion Pulsars are not close enough, that I sent in to deal extra damage to the main base, but unfortunately nothing really important happening, I'm afraid. Just more, I mean, sending a bunch of Chrono Ports, I mean, my stuff is fine, but for some reason Sarko's, his actions got messed up. So I don't know why they got messed up, they just did. <sighs> Well, okay, this is not going on the... This isn't going to edit out of the YouTube one. Anyway, here's Sarkoz's... Chrono Porter. He did get Gate Tech ultimately. He is getting a Chrono Porter. This is partly how he won. He did actually start Chrono Porting as well, which undermined my advantage, but... Frankly, I wasn't doing the most what I could have done with that advantage. Notice, the art resources are just overwhelmingly in QP, and really I should have been evening out. Should have been taking advantage of this expansion that I had. Didn't do that. Didn't take the center more. I really had kind of free reign, or at the very least, some buffer from the torn odds. Nope. So, yeah, Sarkos ended up winning this game rather handily. 
but unfortunately it does not show here. So I apologize to everyone for this inconvenience, but I think it doesn't look like anything really meaningful is going to be happening at this point, from this point on, because if I have all these units, I'm going to end up winning at this point. Which is obviously not what happens, I just told you guys that isn't what happened. What actually happened, here we are, this is the, oh. Okay, so it was just designed, it doesn't really matter what that was, it became designed here very quickly. And that is pretty much the game. I apologize once again, but I'm going to cut this off now. So, sorry about that. It was a really cool game though, I really wish it didn't mess up like that. But, it did. Oh well, I will have to, like I said, deal with that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed at least the first game, and have a good night everyone.